The Dallas Stars are looking to defend home ice tonight before heading out on a four-game road trip. On today's show, I'll be joined by Scott Matla of Locked On Montreal Canadiens to talk all about tonight's matchup, give some insight on both of the teams, as well as our overall predictions for how this game will unfold. All of this coming up on a Tuesday edition of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, I'm your host, Dane Lewis, and you are locked on the Dallas Stars on this Tuesday, January 18th, a Dallas Stars game day. And like I said at the top of the show, in just a moment, I'll be joined by Scott Matla of Locked On Canadians to give you a preview of tonight's game that's going down at the AAC before the Stars hit the road for four games. But before we get into today's crossover, I do want to take a moment and say thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked On Stars, whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener. Thank you for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked On Stars podcast wherever you listen to your podcast at, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. Remember, no matter how you listen or where you listen, the show is always 100% free, and you can rate and review if you like what you hear. But that's going to do it for this introduction that we have. Now let's uh, bring in Scott Matla of Locked On Montreal Canadiens to preview tonight's matchup. Well, welcome in everyone. Stars fans, Habs fans alike. This is Dane Lewis with the Locked On Stars podcast, joined now by one of the hosts of Locked On Canadiens, Scott Matla. Scott, how are you today? I am cold. I am covered in snow. I am tired of seeing snow. And the Montreal Canadiens are not very good at the sport of hockey right now. It's been better, but it could be worse, I guess. Yeah, uh, you told me, you know, you say 14 inches now, and you told me before we started recording here, and I I, I can't even imagine. Just down here in Texas, it's 60 degrees outside, blue skies, uh, just night and day down here in the, the southern part of, of you know, uh, of America. It's It's, you know, night and day. Uh, and feels I feel like, it like always it's is. mean to invite me on and then gloat about the weather and about how your hockey team is actually consistently decent right now. <laughs> well, I- I'll brag about the weather. To say the stars are <laughs> consistently decent is uh, is a bit of a stretch. But, uh, you know, I-, I guess you could say they're doing a little bit better than than Montreal, which I know uh, mo- minutes before recording, Montreal and-, and Arizona just wrapped up the uh, the clash of the Titans as far as the, the lower <laughs> level of the league um, in-, in Montreal falling short. I think the score was 5-2. Uh, if I'm not mistaken there, but yeah. you know, it's kind of a, you know, moving on, got a game on Tuesday against the Dallas stars at the American airlines center. Things might be a little bit colder for, for this game than this year on Monday at the time of recording. But uh, you know, you mentioned this team struggling right now, it's clearly, uh, you know, not having, you know, an ideal season by any stretch of the imagination. I believe, you know, if, if my research is correct, the last win came on December 16th, a uh, three to two shootout win over Philadelphia. Um, so Ben, you know, I, I guess over a month now since, since we've seen the Habs get a win, but what, and I'm sure you guys have talked about this a ton on your show, uh, but maybe just for some of the stars fans who are listening and, you know, a team that also probably, you know, some would argue didn't belong in that 2020 Stanley cup, you know, and and I think there was certainly arguments from people and you're going to get that argument every year, but what has kind of been the turnaround like for this team, you know, being in the Stanley cup final, you know, at the end of 20 of the 2021 season to kind of where you guys are at now, what, what has the turnaround been like and, and kind of why has there been, this great fall off from what seemed like maybe a a promising step forward to kind of where you guys are at now. I think the biggest thing with this entirely is that the Canadians lost so much of their core. A lot of their team is back, which is great, but Carey Price has not played this year. Uh, Is it still out indefinitely after he's got to restart his whole rehab for his knee injury and knee surgery that he had. Shea Weber was somehow playing on one leg. His career is likely over. Philip Deneau, their top line elite defensive center, went to L.A. And all the replacements that came in were not good enough to take all of that. They were they fit in, a, in the system in a vacuum, but now they're being asked to play above their pay grade. And it's not working out the way that the team had hoped. David Savard's having to play minutes he shouldn't have to. 
Mike Hoffman hasn't been a factor. And then the team just nothing clicks. Everything that is can possibly go wrong for this team continues to go wrong every single week. It's you have Toffoli is out long term, Anderson's out long term, Paul Byron's out, Shea Weber's out, Joel Edmondson hasn't played a game this year. They had they were hammered by COVID. They barely were able to play a game last week against Florida. They had the bare minimum of players for that. Across the board, it's just been Murphy's law of just terrible, terrible hockey stuff right now. And every now and then you see flashes, like they put together a couple of good efforts, even if they don't win. And then all of a sudden it's all just off the rails. Like tonight they didn't play at well at all against Arizona. And we know that, you know, Arizona is bad. Montreal shouldn't be this bad. They spent to the cap expecting to contend again, and they're not. So across the board, it's just been coaching doesn't work. The new additions don't work. The players, nothing's clicking. And it's it's frustration for the Habs fans right now. And they're waiting on a new general manager so we can get some kind of direction now. And we thought there was an announcement tonight. And it turns out there is not. So we wait another day for hopefully some good news. Yeah, certainly it's just so hard. And I know, you know, a lot of NHL teams have gone through, you know, their fair share of COVID adversity, you know, last season and even stretching into this season. Uh, I know the Stars recently kind of got out of their uh, odd COVID stretch. And, uh, you know, you mentioned some of these players that just, you know, haven't quite figured it out yet. And there's a guy that I know I predicted to have a pretty big season for you guys at the start of the year when predicting, you know, called their finalists and called their candidates. Um, And Cole Caulfield, a, a guy that, you know, I think a lot of people, including, you know, the, the Habs community had pretty high hopes for uh, coming into the season, but not quite the numbers that, that we thought we'd see from him this season through 28 games. But what's something that you've liked from him uh, throughout the games that he's played and what's something that you think he can continue to work on? Because it certainly would be dramatic to, to say, you know, oh, he has no future because he's 21 years old and has a ton of time in his career to, to really get things going and find some chemistry with some guys on this team. But what have you seen from Caulfield this season that, you know, that you enjoy, but also some things that you hope he can continue to develop as he has his time in the NHL continues. What I've seen from Caulfield this year is that currently the coaching staff doesn't know how to utilize him in that he's constantly playing among the least among all forwards at five on five. He was relegated to second wave power play in a position that doesn't suit his talents. He's a shooter. Why is he playing in the bumper spot? That's not where he should be. He has the skill and the talent. He's put on the right line when he's there with Nick Suzuki or he's there with Ryan Paling and an Arturi Lekkanen or someone that can help cover some of his defensive deficiencies. His play picks up and then the team just doesn't keep him there. They, you know, he got buried against Arizona again. And it's frustrating because he's shooting at like an unsustainably low pace. And it's, it's that Murphy's Law thing. It's the worst possible thing that could happen to him. He wasn't going to score like he did in the playoffs, at least not right away. But he was str- he's just struggling. And this, the coaching staff doesn't know what to do with him. And I'm looking at the way this team, with people coming back, I think he's going to get sent down to the AHL in short order here because his confidence right now is shot. Like, I don't think that he believes the coaching staff believes in him right now. And that's unfortunate because he's a huge player part of this team's future and right now i i don't know what to make of what they're going to do with him it's he's outside of mike hoffman there is no one who can shoot the puck like cole caulfield can on this team and they don't want to seem to give him the same opportunities there and i don't know if it's a prospect thing or what but it, it's one of those things where you just i kind of the bang my head against the wall i know and fans know how good he is and that this is not who he is overall he's only 21 he's going to get better but there's no kind of guidance there for him right now. He's kind of left adrift with no real messaging on what, Hey, focus on doing this or doing this. It just seems like he's kind of drifting out there. And that's unfortunate, especially with the way the season has gone. Cause even if they were bad, we expected him to be a bright spot this year. Yeah, certainly. I I think that that was kind of what I was thinking too, is even if, you know, there was a little bit of a relapse with this team that, you know, a guy like Caulfield can be a bright spot. Uh, tends to be the case with, you know, these teams that find themselves at the bottom of the standings. It's like, hey, we have this guy that's, you know, the future of the franchise, the future face of the franchise, if you will. Um, But, you know, kind of moving to another young guy on this team that uh, is performing, you know, 
pretty well compared to, uh, you know, the rest of the roster. The leader in points, uh, Nick Suzuki, 22 years old, seven goals, 12 assists through 36 games this season. What has have you seen from him that he does really well um, to where, you know, he now finds himself at the top of, of the point scoreboard for this team and kind of as, I guess, the leader of this team? What have you liked from him so far this season? My co-host and I say it all the time. He is a very cerebral player. He thinks the game at a level that not a lot of people on the Canadians do. And it's, it's tough to watch because you see him do all these little things. His passes are in the right spot. He does things to open up lanes and then his line mates are just not on the same level or something similar. And he's so smart and he signed this huge extension in the off season going into the season, which I'm glad they got done because He'd be prime offer sheet fodder. He's such a smart, intelligent player. And that even with this season being as bad as it is, the points are going to come once everything kind of writes itself. His defensive play has picked up a lot. I know people are going to look at him being a minus, but he plays the most minutes out of every forward on the team. He was playing 20 plus minutes a night during COVID and everything. He's got so much talent and he's only scratching the surface. And once they get these lineups sorted out and get the right combinations together we're going to see the nick suzuki we saw in the playoffs last year where he was just under a point a game i believe he's a special special talent for this team and he is the cornerstone of this franchise and will be going forward yeah certainly seems like a, a really exciting guy and like you mentioned you know a really good playoff performance from him and uh you know it was a ton of fun to watch it you know down the stretch of, of, of last season and uh yeah certainly you know seems like things are tough now but you know, you could the, the nice part about that is you can only go up and it seems like, you know, slowly but surely there, there's some pieces throughout this organization that, you know, show show some promise for the, the Montreal Canadiens going forward uh, to be competitive in the in the, you know, in their division and hopefully across the NHL once again. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it is that I, I know the Habs are bad, but like no one thinks they're this bad, like historically bad, the literally historically bad. They might win less games this year than they did in their run to the cup final last year, which is an astounding stat that I really wish I hadn't read after the game. today. <laughs> so that is where we're at right now. Ooh, yeah, certainly a uh, uh, tough scenes, but you know, o- only can go up and it's only going to make the eventually whenever, you know, the Canadians find their way back to the cup and lift the cup and victory, it's going to going to make things a lot more sweeter to look back at this and see, you know, the mountain that was climbed. But we're going to take a quick break here between this crossover episode between Locked on Stars, Locked on Canadians after a quick thank you to one of our sponsors. And that sponsor is betonline.ag. BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year, and there's a new updated desktop and mobile website where you can sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Jumping back into today's crossover episode between Locked On Stars and Locked On Canadians, Dane Lewis, Scott Matla here talking about tonight's matchup between the Stars and the Habs at the American Airlines Center. And uh, Scott, the floor is now yours. I'm here to answer any Stars related questions that you have or, you, you know, things that you think the, the Canadians fans at home might want to know about about the Stars team that, you know, these teams haven't met up in a while with the division realignment last season. Uh, it's been been a minute since these two teams have run into each other. I suppose my big thing is, is how is Dallas coping with Ben Bishop? It was expected that hopefully he would be able to be back this year. Uh, Obviously he had to retire due to what I assume is a culmination of injuries and Hudobin obviously over the last couple of years is kind of a really feel good story came out of nowhere. And I know Jake Ottinger has been on his way up, but how is the team coping goaltending wise? Cause as someone who's watching his team fall apart without their, you know, franchise goaltender, how is that affecting, you know, the stars and what they do on a given night, knowing that you have a guy who was never really a bona fide starter and a prospect on his way up? Yeah, the the whole Dallas Stars goalie situation has just been an ordeal since training camp. 
Uh, you, you know, like you said, there was expected that Ben Bishop was eventually going to make his return. Anton Hudobin was still looking like he could produce at a high level. Jake Ottinger, a promising prospect. And then, of course, you know, the Stars brought in Braden Holtby over the offseason, a guy who's won a Stanley Cup, who's won the Vesna Trophy before, but had a little bit of a rough season with the Canucks last year. But still, you know, something, the Stars saw something in him that, you know, that showed that he had a little bit left in the tank. And now, like you said, we're at the point where Bishop's gone. Hugh Dobin was sent back down to the AHL, is currently on the NHL roster um, because Braden Holtby was in the NHL's COVID protocol. Um, and he did start on Saturday against the Tampa Bay Lightning and did okay. He, he gave up three goals and what was ended up being a Stars loss. But it, it's been a very weird situation, but I think the Stars are at a point now where they feel confident if the roster is healthy. Um, and, and I've had several episodes where I say, I think Holtby and Ottinger are the future moving forward, at least for this season. I think Ottinger is the future long term. I think he's proven last season and this season that he belongs, you know, somewhere on an NHL roster playing goalie. And I think the stars have liked what they've seen from him. And then Holtby has been a nice surprise kind of given the year that he had last year, he's come in and kind of solidified himself as the, the number one guy, whenever he's healthy, um, you know, not that Ottinger can't do that, but Holtby just has a little bit more experience under his belt has been in some pretty tough situations and been, and, and, you know, the most intense moments playing in the Stanley cup final and uh, has had some really good stretches this season. I don't think that we'll be seeing him play against the Canadians as he's just coming back from, from COVID protocol. We might, I'm typically wrong about my, uh, my goalie predictions, <laughs> but uh, Jake Ottinger had a little bit of a rough road trip in Florida uh, on Friday. I think he gave up four or five goals before he was pulled against the Panthers, which the Panthers are just bullying goalies across the league now. So uh, maybe he'll be, you know, recovered enough to get this start against Montreal. But regardless of who we see, I think this is going to be an important game for either guy for Ottinger. If he starts to get some mojo back, and gets his confidence rebuilt and Holtby, uh, kind of the same thing because he hasn't played in a little bit over a week, having been out with COVID and looking to get his legs back under him a little bit. So a weird goalie situation in Dallas, but they, they at their best when they're healthy, it's actually one of the, the strong cornerstone columns of this team. If you kind of look at it from a bird's eye view. I, I suppose my next question to follow up here then is John Klingberg. has been in the news for, Unfortunately, not doing what we know John Klingberg is capable of. What what is that whole going on in that situation there? Because as far as I knew from an outside perspective, is that it's Klingberg and Heiskanen. This is their team going forward in the future because obviously Sagan, uh, Jamie Ben, Alexander Radulov are a little bit older, comparatively speaking. And now Klingberg seems to be on his way out potentially. What what kind of impact would him being traded leave or do to the stars there? That's a big piece of the lineup out, and it, it feels like that's a very big step backwards from where the stars have been in recent years. Yeah, it would absolutely be a pretty devastating blow, I think, to the fan base and to the locker room just of who John Klingberg has been for this organization. He had, I think, 21 points in the, the stars' Stanley Cup run in the playoffs. Uh, was just a consistent performer then and has always been a consistent performer for the Stars team and been a staple of this team for the past several years. I mean, drafted by the Stars, been here pretty much since day one of his NHL career. Uh, and it, it's just kind of an unfortunate circumstance where he wants an eight-year deal and wants, you know, a little bit over $65 million, But this, you know, and he's about to turn 30. But I think the Stars are just kind of in this weird position where there's some other younger talent on the roster that's going to be expecting that kind of money either this offseason or next. And it's just coming down to, would you rather have these young guys like Jason Robertson and Rope Hintz, or would you rather have Klingberg who's turning 30 on a little bit of a decline really, you know, in the past season or two, which some people credit to Rick bonus taking over as coach in the middle of the 1920 season. And so it's just kind of a weird, unfortunate situation when you talk about the business side of sports is the stars just having, you know, they just paid Miro Haskin in, an eight, an eight million or eight year, about $67 million deal. And, you know, he's a young guy, 21 years old, the future defenseman of this franchise, but they also are paying Ryan Suter for like the next four years for some reason, even though he's on the, the better side of 35. And I forgot uh, he was in Dallas. I had yeah. completely forgotten. That was a move that had happened this off season. There, there's a, uh, there's some days I, w I wish I could forget that too, but then I see him play and, uh, <laughs> and it's hard to forget sometimes he, he, I, I, I'm being a little harsh, but, uh, yeah, he, he, he's not changing this team for the better, but not dragging it down. Uh, but still, the fact that we're paying him for the next four years, and I think he'll be over 40 by the time that that contract runs out, kind of kind of weird to me, especially if, you know, with guys like Klingberg and even Essa Lindell, 
who's kind of a, a, a mid to late twenties defender. Who's been, you know, a decent piece for this team, but yeah, it, it seems now at this point, and I was talking about this on, on Monday's show uh, that it almost seems like a matter of when, not if he's going to get traded this season talks have kind of, you know, declined at least on the stars end of trying to get a contract worked out because his contract does expire at the end of this season. So I won't be shocked if we see him get dealt before the trade deadline, especially if the stars continue to not be able to perform on the road and kind of find themselves out of the playoff picture. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see Klingberg get moved. It'd be really sad. Uh, I know a lot of stars fans don't want to see him leave and they hope that he can somehow stick around and maybe uh, there's kind of also speculation that bonus the coach will be done after this season as his contract's going to expire. And maybe with the new coach, he's able to kind of find a resurgence. And even if he's not getting his money's worth, still able to play at a high level and contribute to a team that's kind of at the back end of, you know, a, a deep playoff run kind of window with guys, like you said, Sagan and Ben Radulov, who, who I think, you know, will be gone after the season two with an expiring contract. Yeah, a lot of these older guys kind of on their last leg, even Joe Pavelski, as good as he's been this season uh, at 37 years old, you know, you can only imagine that there's only so much left in the tank for a guy like him. Who's probably looking to go on one last cup run before he, uh, before he hangs up the skates. I, I kind of look at the stars where I'm like, you have a winning record. You're a few points out of, the last wild card spot at what point is it okay we're pulling the cord on this this is we're not going for this do you think that point is approaching and then john klingberg becomes the guy at the trade deadline then i do is that point coming or do you think they're going to try and push this right through until you know battle to the bitter end and try and make the playoffs maybe add at the deadline as opposed to subtract yeah, and it's so tricky because this team is just wildly inconsistent. Uh, at their best, they look like they can literally hang with any team in the league and that they could easily be playing for a Stanley Cup. And at their worst, I, I mean, they just look like a, a team that is playing hockey for the first time. Uh, and so I, I really think that this week, this next week is going to be very telling for how the rest of the season will go. Um, you know, they have a game at home against Montreal, a game that they should win. Um, and they really need to win every point at this, at, you know, every point that they can get matters at this point. But then their next four matchups will be on the road where they only have four wins. Uh, and I believe three or four of those wins are coming in overtime or in the shootout form. And so they just haven't found ways to perform on the road. And if they lose, you know, three or four of these road games and, and most of these games against some opponents like Buffalo and Philadelphia uh, that they that they should beat. Um, you know, if we're being completely honest, just based on record and skill and things like that, I, I think that that's going to be pretty telling to kind of like, hey, we, we can't get this figured out because good teams can win at home. The Stars have a great home record, but they great teams win at home and on the road. And the Stars just have not figured out the recipe for success on the road. And so I think this next week will be really telling. And if there's not a whole lot of success there and then even after that, they have some tough home games. Uh, coming up after the road trip. I think that as we get closer to the trade deadline, that's going to kind of be, you know, the breaking point of, hey, we're going to really push for this playoff run or they might throw in the towel, give up Klingberg and and kind of start planning for next season because they do still have a lot of young, promising talent. But I, I think there just needs to be some changes made in the offseason as far as coaching and maybe, you know, even through through more free agency trades, things like that. Because like I said, guys like Pavelski, Radulov, their, their contracts are done at the end of the season. And if Klingberg's gone, that opens up a little bit of cap room as well. There's flexibility to be had. Whereas the Canadians right now, I look at that and go, I don't know what they're going to do. And it's not going to be pretty one way or the other. At least there seems to be some kind of path for Dallas to work their way through this one way or the other. Yeah. It, it seems that way as of right now. And uh, the world of sports is so odd. And there's part of me that, you know, that thinks I'll be looking back at this part of the season laughing and be like, Whoa, the stars turned it around and went on this really deep playoff run. And, you know, I, I can't imagine they'll be back in the cup, but I think if they can turn it around, they can, you know, maybe win an early playoff series in the fir first round and have a second round exit or uh, it, it, that's just where I, but also it wouldn't surprise me to see them miss by, by quite a bit. And by the last month or two of the season, we're just, watching games for the sake of watching games and uh, kind of looking forward to the draft and, and things like that. And talking about prospects who are either at the AHL level or playing for some, for some other clubs uh, because the stars do have some good talent there as well, but guys, we probably won't see in the NHL for the next year or two. Well, it's all about how you build around those young guys. I know Jason Robertson's a, a hell of a talent right now. And I know that there's more, I saw them play the Texas stars played in Laval recently. So I got to see, some of what was happening there and it is someone who's watching the Canadians do that right now, at least, like I said, there's some kind of plan in place there. It's not all, 
okay, we got to hope the veterans can carry us here. So they probably will against the Canadians in this upcoming game because Tyler Sagan loves a game against the Montreal Canadiens nowadays. So um, I, I am, uh, I don't know if I'm not looking forward to it. Or I'm just very tired of watching the Canadians try their best on a given night. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I, I think and, you know, you mentioned Tyler Sagan. This would be a great game for him to, you know, turn things on. I feel like I say that at least once a week and then he'll come out and have a decent game. And we're like, oh, Tyler Sagan's finally back to being Tyler Sagan. And then he disappears for the next two or three games. So he's kind of at given how the trends have gone this season in one of his lulls right now. And uh, maybe maybe this game is something that he that he can use and get a point or two on the board and then go on to this four game road trip and you know, perform well there because it's kind of seems like, you know, the Stars goaltending, Miro Haskinen, the top line, and then everyone else is a question mark as whether or not they're going to they're going to show up and play hard. Moving on to the closing segment of today's crossover episode between Locked on Stars and Locked on Canadians, Dane Lewis, Scott Matla here to talk about the predictions that we have for tonight's matchup between the Stars and the Habs at the American Airlines Center. And Scott, we'll start with you. How do you how do you see this game unfolding tonight between these two teams? Painfully. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, anyone who was watching Monday on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Canadians put forth a lackluster effort in a 5-2 loss in the toilet bowl to the Arizona Coyotes. It wasn't pretty. The team looks disjointed. And now they're playing on a back-to-back. They pulled their young upcoming prospect goaltender to try and find a spark. It didn't really work. So I don't know who is starting in Dallas. I would assume potentially Samuel Montembeau, which uh, unfortunately for him, the team in front of him hasn't helped him much this year. So his numbers aren't great. And he's always due for a couple of uh, shaky looking goals. It's I'm not expecting Montreal to come out with a ton of firepower. Like they have guys who are capable of it. But across the board, this team struggles, especially on back-to-backs of getting itself in gear. And when they do, sometimes it's only for a brief period of time. And if they can't secure a pretty strong lead there, all bets are off on what's going to happen. And I'd like to see guys like Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki get on the board. I think Jonathan Drouin's been playing really, really good. Uh, All things considered, the season he added a goal. He had an assist against, uh, obviously, uh, not... He had two assists, I'm sorry, against Arizona, not a goal and assist. But I'd look for him to have a pretty strong game. I think Caulfield's going to have a strong game. And the defense is kind of finding itself, working itself out a little bit. But I think that this is Dallas's game to lose right now. It's a really good chance for anyone who might be on the schneid or just not playing well to kind of get their chance. Montreal doesn't challenge opposing offenses too strongly they tend to give up the zone very easily their coverage is kind of lackluster especially on odd man rushes uh i think dallas is gonna probably coast to a pretty comfortable victory here they're probably gonna put four goals in the net at least um montreal might get one or two but i'm not anticipating much more from them in terms of offense yeah i I think you know just coming from the star side of things certainly a game that you know on paper we should win I really think the Stars will win, but also a game that they need to be mindful of going in. Uh, You know, you hear the term trap game thrown around uh, a lot of sports with, you know, these teams that seem better than their opponents and then they kind of struggle or come out flat and and let the opponent either win or maybe get a little too close to winning. And uh, it would be just a really bad look for the Stars going on to this four game road trip if they can't secure two points here. And uh, yeah, certainly I think, you know, uh, need to have a big night all around from the team and get some guys like Ben and Sagan and Radulov, who's been out with COVID too, maybe get him back in a groove. And uh, I don't think the Stars will have Jason Robertson. He was out in their last game with the lower body injury. We don't know what kind of lower body injury because the NHL likes to be very vague with their injury descriptions. <laughs> so for all we know, he has a torn ACL or he just has a sore knee and he'll, he'll be back in, in a week or so. Uh, but, but regardless, I, yeah, I expect a big night from the Stars playing in front of the home crowd. They have a very, very good home record uh, so far this season. I mean, they've some of the best teams in the league have come to the American Airlines Center and lost, but also the Ottawa Senators have beaten the Dallas Stars twice twice this season when you talk about teams kind of near the bottom of the standings. And so anything's possible, but yeah, I I think four or five goals for the Stars will hopefully be in order. And if they can somehow, you know, keep, keep Montreal the one or two goals or even a shutout, the Stars have not posted a shutout yet this season. And uh, regardless of who's in the net, I think that that would be a really nice confidence boost for them, but also for the team. And maybe 
you know, maybe John Klingberg can have a nice game because even with all these trade talks, uh, his play the past few games has not been very good. And so I can't imagine there's a whole lot of teams like chomping at the bit to come get him as of right now, uh, just based on the past few games that he's played as an overall product from what we've seen. Certainly a, a guy that I think a lot of teams would be interested in, but maybe he can, you know, turn it around a little bit and have a little bit of a better performance and the defenseman as a whole can maybe kind of find their footing again. Cause even guys like Miro Haskin have felt a little bit off over the past few games, but excited to see what the stars can do and, and look to establish a little bit of momentum. And uh, of course, excited to also see some of the young talent that Montreal has uh, always fun to watch really fast skaters on other teams or, you know, guys that can shoot the puck well, because the stars are, you know, kind of too far and in between uh, in some of those areas of the ice. And that's the thing is like when Montreal's game is working, you see Josh Anderson flying down the ice. You see Cole Caulfield weaving in and out of defenders. You'll see uh, uh, Nick Suzuki doing magical things with the puck. Same with Jonathan Drouin. But when the team is off, it, it is, you, you notice it readily. Pat, just even clearing the defensive zone becomes a Herculean task. And against a team like Dallas that has, even if they're banged up or they're not fully healthy, they have the guys who can take advantage of that. And that's what worries me is that once things kind of turn against the Canadians, they don't have that next gear right now, or they've been lacking that this season. I don't know if it's just demoralized out of them or what, but if you let them play their game with speed and pace, they're going to, they're going to make really good players look really bad, but it's hard to find that consistency right now. Uh, this feels like the kind of game where it's a last stand for a lot of players. Like we've gone to bat for the coach a bunch of times now. What do we have to do to, you know, get some kind of points on the board? I know that tanking is this taboo thing and no one likes to lose. At some point, you got to win some games, fluke or not. And I'm hoping that the effort is there because watching listlessness is is tough. I can accept losing so long as the effort's there behind it. And I'm hoping out of everything else in this game, we get to see a real strong effort from a lot of guys because there's a lot of people who have been passengers for the last couple of weeks, and that that time is over now. Someone's got to step up and lead in absence of all these other players. Yeah, certainly, you know, not fun to watch your team lose, even if it is kind of a down season. And so, uh, you know, maybe we'll see a really, really interesting game. And I think it's worth noting on the Canadians and that some of y'all's wins this season have come against some good teams. I know y'all beat Calgary once. Nashville is having a really good season. Detroit, who I think y'all beat twice, you know, no, not a joke of a team this year. So we've seen this this Montreal team hang with some of the best in the league as far as talent and, and, and you know, points and records go. And that's exactly it is they have the talent. They've beaten Pittsburgh. They've taken Nashville to the brink twice. They won one of those. They had a really good game against Calgary. Like you said, they can do this. It's just, how do you get there now? Cause this is a team that I, I feel like is running out of plan A's, B's, C's, D's through W at this point, you know, find something that works. And even if it's one game show the coach and potentially the new GM that there is effort and care in this team. These are guys that are might be playing for their future when the new uh, when the new GM takes over at the end of this week. Yeah, but sounds like potentially a lot on the line for both sides, kind of for different things. But going to be really interesting to see how this game unfolds. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for for you know collaborating with me on this. Glad that we were able to do this, and maybe once these teams meet up again in Montreal later this season, hopefully if if teams are. Uh, able to come play in Canada. I know there's a little bit of complication there. We can, uh, you know, do this again, but hopefully the we get an entertaining game tonight. Don't know if that'll be the case, but, you know, going to be fun to, to break it down after. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Dane. Certainly hope you guys enjoyed that crossover between myself and Scott over at Locked On Canadians. Be sure to go check them out if you need more insight on this Habs team before tonight's game. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Stars. Thank you guys again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Locked On Bets podcast, your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs, hosted by your boy Q with expert insight and analysis from Lee Sterling. Be sure to tune into tomorrow's episode of Locked On Stars for a full breakdown of this Stars Canadians matchup. We'll be talking about the players that played well and talk about some areas of improvement as it's the Dallas Stars. So even if they win this game, there will be something that they can improve on moving 
forward. But also be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked On Stars podcast if you do not do so already, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. The show is always 100% free. Be sure to rate and review if you like what you hear. And also follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. That's at D-A-N-E two underscores L-E-W-I-S. You can also find the show on Twitter at Locked On Stars. But that's going to do it for today's episode, Stars fans. I hope you have a fantastic day, and we will see you back here tomorrow.